Tonespot CM is a preset-based plugin from Audified, and it takes its inspiration from their Express series plugins. Operation is very simple, but the plugin does incorporate some pretty good processing, ranging from saturation and compression to multi-effects such as chorus, flanger, phaser, delay and reverb. In this tutorial, we're going to run through how to get started, including downloading, installing and authorizing the plugin. We'll then show you what you can achieve with various sounds, including drums, bass, piano and guitar. And to make things even simpler, we've created a bunch of tutorial audio files that can be downloaded from filesilo.co.uk forward slash computer music. Tonespot CM comes in VST, VST3, AU and AAX formats and supports Mac OS 10.9 and Windows 7 or higher. Use the link in computer music to open the purchase page and then apply the special discount code which will make the purchase completely free. With your order complete, Audified will then email you a serial number and download links to access the plugin installers. Enter your details including the enclosed serial number and download the correct installer for your platform. Now run the installer. The installer includes a further security check, so enter your name and serial number once again. Then decide which plugin formats you want to install. With the installation application finished, the software may then require you to reboot your computer to complete the process. To help get you started, we've prepared some tutorial files and these can be accessed from filesilo.co.uk forward slash computer music. They include WAV files for drums, bass, guitar and piano and have been selected to use with the preset patches included with Tonespot CM. All files start from zero and are at 160 BPM. Load them up in a fresh DAW session. Now load up an instance of Tonespot CM, so we can run through its main features. Tonespot CM is a preset plugin that uses combinations of processors, such as EQ, compression and delay. However, aside from delay and modulation timing, the actual parameters are hidden. Use the drop down menu in the middle to check out the bank of over 30 categorized presets. Tonespot CM includes a number of handy setup features that will help you make the most of the processing. First up, calibration, which you'll find by clicking on the spanner icon. This adjusts the internal operating level of the plugin, and you can see as we adjust it that the amount of gain reduction is changing. Next up, AGC. Tonespot CM includes separate automatic gain control for both input and output. It's worth emphasizing this continuously adjusts the gain. So the output option might be useful as gain makeup after compression while the input option is useful to achieve consistent processing. Nevertheless, for more control, we suggest using the manual input and output levels. Further features include window resizing, input channel selection, including left, right and stereo options, three metering modes, and tempo synced delay and modulation settings. There's also a rather handy dry mix control that's ideal for blending the affected signal with the original dry signal. With black box style plugins, it can be hard to really know what's going on under the hood. And although extreme processing is obvious, more subtle settings might prove harder to deduce. One simple but effective tip with Tonespot CM 
is to switch metering mode to gain reduction. This will quickly establish how much compression or limiting is happening and may help you fine tune your input settings. Try switching between the following two drum presets, bus final touch and clear rock overheads to demonstrate the difference. Tonespot CM is well equipped for drum processing. Start by loading up the snare.wav track with an instance of Tonespot CM. Select preset Bright Punch Snare from the drum folder, set the metering to gain reduction and the output level to AGC. The preset thickens and brightens the snare, and as we increase the input, the compression adds a nice fatness. Our second snare specific preset is Double Comp Snare. As the name suggests, this is a compression heavy preset, and certainly works blended in using the dry mix. It also sounds quite good driven hard. On the snare.wav track, try gradually increasing the input level. When you get to about 10 dB and beyond, the snare develops a really nice snap. The final snare preset is Fat Smash Snare. This is a much darker setting and you can hear straight away the EQ in the preset thickening up the sound. This is ideal for adding weight to a weedy snare, but on our snare.wav track is clearly a bit too much. Nevertheless, try using the dry mix for a more suitable outcome. For kick drum, select the kick.wav audio and load up preset fat rock kick. Set the metering to gain reduction and activate the output AGC. This preset adds thickness to the kick sound. Now try increasing the input level. You'll hear more compression, but also a bit more attack. we found our desired sound with the input set to 13 dB. The next kick preset, Heavy Click Kick, is very different. This adds a much more obvious attack, but also thins out the kick quite a bit. Once again, we find our sweet spot by increasing the input 14 dB, and by using the dry mix, we can blend in some of the original kick to taste. Drum sounds lend themselves to automatic gain compensation, particularly at the output stage. This works very well for our snare and kick examples but also applies to other drum sounds. To test this out, try loading up the room.wav audio and select the room control preset. Set the metering to gain reduction, reduce the input to its minimum, and activate AGC on the output. Now gradually increase the input. The output successfully compensates for the increasing gain reduction, and we can focus on getting the sound right. 
Now let's look at some more drum sounds. For sounds such as overheads, we have a few options. Load up the kit.wav audio and start with preset clear rock overheads. This brightens and thins out the overheads, but maybe a bit too much. So we're blending in the dry signal as well, using the dry mix. Now listen to this in context with the whole kit. Next up, try the room control preset on the room.wav audio. The effect sounds quite extreme in isolation, so we've set the dry mix at 60% to blend it in a bit. Nevertheless, when we add back in the other drum sounds including our processed overheads from step 1, we can adjust the dry mix to 30% for a bit more flavour. Finally, Tonespot CM also has a decent preset for drum subgroups called Bus Final Touch. Try this using the full kit mix.wav audio, which is a stereo blend of the whole drum kit. The preset adds a bit of air and also a touch of compression, and for subtle enhancement, we've blended in the dry signal with the dry mix on 50%. Now let's look at some more sounds. Tonespot CM includes some rather good reverb and delay effects, ideal for adding polish to acoustic sounds. Start with the Piano.Wav track and select the Modern Bright Piano preset. Ensure the two AGCs are switched off and set the input to 3dB and output to 0dB. The reverb is a bit too dominant, so we've set the dry mix to 35%. For a more contained piano sound, try the Natural Tight Piano preset. This delivers a brighter, harder sound, and by increasing the input, we can push the compression as well. With the input at 6dB and output at minus 2dB, we've got a nice crisp piano sound with ambience. Now load up the acoustic guitar.wav audio and clear strumming acoustic preset from the acoustic folder. The preset thins and brightens the guitar, and by increasing the input, we can introduce a bit of compression. We've set the input to 8 dB and output to minus 2 dB. For our sound though, it's a bit too thin, and we set the dry mix to 50%. The modern ARP acoustic preset might be a better choice for our acoustic sound, and we can use different delay times for different outcomes. For a closer, more slappy sound, try eighths. And for a more spacey effect, one half or one. Just like step 3, we can adjust the input to add compression. Finally, for a richer acoustic sound, try the modern violoncello preset. This short but dense reverb effect has a fast build-up and includes modulation, EQ and delay. 
the result is a broader sound. And to finesse, we can simply blend in the direct signal to taste. Presets offer a quick way to process specific types of sounds, and we've shown how ToneSpot CM's categorised presets work in their prescribed situations. Even so, sometimes it's worth just spinning through the presets regardless of type and seeing what works. Load up the synthbleep.wav audio. A few of the presets work quite well, with the drum preset room control adding a boxy vibe. and the modern ARP acoustic guitar delivering a nice panning space. Our favourite is Atmo Ballad Electric Guitar, with the delay sync on eighths. Now let's try some bass. Our first example uses the Edge Bass preset. Load this up across the bass.wav track, setting the input and output to manual. Now increase the input level, we've set it to 11 dB, and lower the output level, we've set it to minus 8 dB. The bass now has enhanced attack and also a swift release on the compression, delivering a more upfront sound. Next up, try the fat bass preset. You'll need to adjust the input down. We're starting at minus 2 dB and the output up, plus 3 dB for us. This has quite a round sound with plenty of compression, and by increasing the input, you can add in plenty more of that squashy compression. Finish things off by selecting a time division for the incorporated modulation. Finally, Synth Bass is a handy transformative preset that can be used with any reasonably clean source sound. Try it with the bass.wav audio, and you'll hear the source acoustic bass takes on a rich, modulated and fuzzy sound. Adjust the modulation speed, we've set it to quarters, and you're good to go. So if you like what you hear, as mentioned, Audified has an extensive stable of plugins for you to try, so why not head over to audified.com.